OTOs, upsells, and sales pages. How do they work? How do we integrate them? How do we make them all look amazing? So I'm going to share my screen here and go back to the um, ClickFunnels account I was in. Go back into the funnel that I was working in last week, the testing funnel. So right now we have our opt-in, our thank you page. But what about if we want to add the sales page? What about if we want to add an OTO page? How do we do an upsell on the page? Like, So these are all valid questions because when you start a new funnel, all it gives you is the opt-in and the thank you. Um, so first of all, you have to add a new step. We'll claim this one as the sales page because that will be the next the next one. And I don't even I don't put the path in there. I just let it automatically create one and then I change it later um, once I've figured out. So you can either choose from an and so the sales page. The sales page is where you either want to have the uh, form directly on the page or you want to have um, a button on the that says, yes, I want to go to the sales page or go to the checkout page, I mean. So either one will work. For that, you got to go into the sales page section. So it has opt-in, sales, webinar, membership, affiliates, blah, 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 blah. We want a sales page. So we click on it. And I have some that I've saved from before. But let's just go down here and pick a sales page. Um, Steven, which sales page? You got an idea? No? Um, I don't really. I don't know. <laughs> do you have a favorite one that you use or do you build at all? I haven't built one yet. Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay, well, we'll just take the first one in the lineup here. This is email marketing launch page. All right, we'll select it. I don't know what it is. I don't use these. I create my own and then I go through those. So we have the opt-in, we have the thank you in the sales page. They're out of order right now. You would never, you know, you don't want your opt-in to go straight to your thank you page. You want to put your sales page in there as well. Um, so now here is the sales page. We'll open it. And this may or may not, this is where if you have your branding package done, you can change it out. Um, so like these blues and greens for say maybe reds and golds or yellows and oranges or whatever it is that, that you have. So this is a pretty basic sales page. Pretty, pretty basic. I actually don't like it at all because there's not enough, like depends upon what you're selling. So the length of your sales page um, will be determined by the price point of what you're offering. So if you have a $27 offer and you're writing a sales page for it, this might work for it because it doesn't need to be as long as say something that's going to cost them $25,000 or even $2,500. Those need to be much longer sales pages um, and have much more content in them. So for the sake of this one, we'll say it's a $27 offer. Okay, so this one here would work. But if you need to add a new section, um, now they have sections, rows, comma, or commas, columns, and elements in here. So if you need to add a new section, which is this whole piece, this green area, you just click the plus. It's going to ask you, you know, if you want a full width, medium, whatever. We're going to go full width. On my sales pages, I like to shrink. I'm not a fan of the like full width sales pages like these where it goes from left to right um, or that covers the whole screen area. To me, that gives your, um, your prospect too much, too much room to like look around and get lost in other areas. If you notice my sales pages, a lot of them have like a black on the sides. So there's no like it automatically just focuses your attention to the center where I want their eyes to be to consume the content. So these ones here go all out, whichever. 
Um, I'll show you how to narrow it down so that you have it narrowed in just a moment. But <clears throat> so we have our new section, it's right here. There's nothing in it. Now we have to add a row. So the row is where you want, so this is two rows. So this one here would be two rows. See the little split in the center on the blue? You could also have it as four rows if you're if you're not sure if you're not sure how to put these in, like these little uh, photo highlight kind of things. Um, there's not as much um, custom ability in here as you would think there would be. Um, so sometimes I will put as a four row. So you can build it identical to that with four rows. So we're going to put in four rows, and I'll show you how to do it. We'll have oh, there and there, and then here we will narrow it down. That looks pretty good. Um, we can save these images. I'm not going to save them, I'll just put a different image in. Image, and then it should take me to an image because right now it's just a placeholder. So these are images that you have. I'm just going to put the face logo there. And I'll do the same over here. I'll put another logo there. But you got to add the image placeholder first. So it's kind of a couple steps. But and then you add your uh, so this one's got a headline and then it's got like some text. So we'll do the headline and some text. These are center justified. We want them left justified. We're gonna go left, just click on the box and go left and it'll all do it. Now to add the, um, the font choices, um, the font sizing, all of that, you want to highlight it so that it's in orange. You don't wanna click on it for the blue too much. You want it to be, that's for like the justification, the bold, the, all that stuff. You want it to highlight it so that it's in orange. Click okay. the cog, there, here you go with all your, your choices. And then if you have Google fonts, you can have like a billion more in here. So I just like to use a standard one um, and then minimize it a little bit so it's all on one line. If it ends up on two lines, I'm very OCD with the, the formatting of it. So I want the stuff to be either on one line if I can get it, or if it happens to be two lines, then I will try to make everything else for two lines as well, just so that it, it looks more cohesive. But Question. Is a, yes. Is there a reason why you want it um, left center, uh, instead of centered, you want it to the left? So it's just easier. It looks more cohesive okay. um, rather than centered. Now, okay. when you get to the, um, op, uh, um, the mobile version, then I will center it because it's really, really narrow. And it just looks kind of funny sometimes if it's um, left justified as opposed to center justified. And it's, it's more of just for the cohesive factor. That's all. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. I'm also a big fan of making sure that these are easily easy to read. I've noticed a lot of funnels and websites these days where the font is so tiny, like you have to zoom in your own computer to see it. I want people to be able to easily read that content so that they can consume it and get down to the buy button or the opt-in button or wherever I want them to go and whatever I want them to do. So we've added the image, we've added the, um, the bold text, the headline text, we've added the, the uh, body copy, and you can change these here, which this body copy is bigger than the other one. So we're going to go down about there. You can change the image sizes. So say this is too big of an image. I don't want it that big. I want it to be smaller. You can play around with it. So say let's 75. So this is one way to do 
these boxes as well. To do them just like this, one, you can either copy it or clone it and then just move it up there. That would look like this. Actually, it won't. Here, let me. I would have to create a new row with two columns and then I would have to move it because otherwise it moves to the section in the column. Um, so these ones here. Or to build it individually, these are, um, dun, 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 dun. I think they're right here. Image. Nope, that is not it. Add an element and go down to, in the world did I see them? Oh, here we go, image feature. And then you can decide, um, so you would click on it and your image, there's your placeholder. You could put our image there. So it lines up a little bit. Um, you can make it to where the text and the image are even, like 50-50. Or if you wanted to do that, you know, the 80, 20, 70, 30, 60, 40, whatever one you felt would be more in alignment with your page and all of that. Because a lot of it is not necessarily about the words on the page. I mean, those are excessively important, but sometimes it's about how the information flows on the page as well to be able to get them from point A to point B and to be able to consume all of your content. So, and then you just double click to change the information here and then your headline and you can change the fonts and everything as well over here. Mm, let's see. Okay, I'm just kidding. See, there's not as much. Oh, there we go, the font family. So you only get one for both of them. So, whereas if you do it this version, you can have, or I'm sorry, this version here, you can have multiple. And if you're, the space isn't what you want in between, say, so the space from this one, the space to this one, you just center it or you justify it. You want it, say, right centered for that one. And then you, these ones here are already centered to the left. So you'd right center this one. Like that one's taking up the whole space anyway. So there's entering in these for your sales page. So now to go on to taking, so we save it, let's save it first. Otherwise it's just gonna be for nothing. We'll have wasted all of our time. So I think last week we connected the button to the page. Um, so we wanted to go to a specific spot. We're gonna move these in the order in which we want. So we have the opt-in and the opt-in can go right directly into the thank you or you can have the opt-in and then go to the sales page and say, oh, by the way, I have this. Or, oh, by the way, Here's this product. Those are more of your OTOs as opposed to your sales pages. Um, the opt-in for the sales page would be like, hey, would you like to get more information about X, Y, and Z? Then you would run that button into your sales page. But a traditional opt-in where you have a PDF or something that you're trying to exchange for their email address, you would definitely have the opt-in and then the thank you page, and that would probably be it. Um, but if you're going to run it straight to the sales page, then to say, now we want to add our OTO. And we're going to type in OTO. Let the path create itself. And then instead of sales, you're going to click on the sales button and you're going to go down to the OTO. So the OTO is the same thing you can have 
um, custom create yours. I don't have any here that are custom created. Um, so you just pick one. I'll pick the first one. So this OTO, did I not pick it? Yeah, there we go. I must have just viewed it. I always view them first, but we're just going to run with it. And there's multiple ones in there. So if you find one that better resembles your vision for your page that you want, like having all of the pieces that are on the page, then choose that one. The colors, you can always change the colors. Now, if there's a custom graphic in there, you'll have to change that. But overall, find the one that closest resembles um, like your goal for the page. So here is this one. This is an OTO. So an OTO is, wait, I have something more for you. It follows in an alignment and it obviously depends upon what you're selling, um, what you're what you're offering on the sales page as to what the OTO is going to be. Now, if it's a product, say a supplement, then you want to offer more of the same is generally the rule. But um, so say I'm offering a funnel build, more of the same is not going to cut it here. It would be, you know, maybe I'm going to offer a six month complimentary package to, or maybe a six month package to help them after I've built their funnel. Um, so it's got to make sense, but be um, not the same thing unless it's like supplements or whatever, something like that, but be complementary, but not the same thing to what you're offering on the sales page. Hopefully that makes sense. That makes sense, Stephen? I think so. <laughs> you're like, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> so then you just customize um, everything. Go to your blocks. You can customize all of it with the colors, we could change it to gray, change it to whatever your theme is. Um, everything in here is pretty much customizable, except why is this one not? Because this is an image. So for an image like this, you would go to um, say your Canva, your PicMonkey, your whatever you use to do your custom graphics. And you can create one of these in there and then just put it in there in your branded colors. Or if you like those colors, then keep it the same. Same thing, there's two splits. This one actually has three splits. So this is a triple one. Um, and then add to my order, no thanks. So these are the links, um, the yes link to your order, which would go to a sales page. The no link, you'd have to figure out where you wanna send them. Do you wanna send them just to your thank you page? Or this one goes to your upsell. Do you want to send to your upsell? Do you want to send to your thank you page? Whichever way you want to send them. So we'll save it. I'll be done. It'll be amazing. Now I'm going to go back to the first page because we're missing a page in here. Um, we're missing the uh, product page. So if you notice on the opt in pages here, we have an overview, the automation, and then publishing. On the sales page, we have overview. Sorry, on the OTO, it should have been on the other one as well. On the OTO, because these are both sales pages. I'm not sure why it's not. Um, on the OTO page, it has a products. It has overview, automation, products, and publishing. You have to click the products, and you have to add the product in to your um to your file so that it can pull a product from that page to show them so that they know that, you know, they have a product to purchase. Otherwise, nothing will come up. So if we go to the OTO page and we just click the preview. So I changed, this is the one that I changed. There's, we're gonna add it. There's nothing there. One, we don't have the button and two, it's, it's not going anywhere. There's no, nothing on the page for it to pull, which I actually don't like this. Let's do a different OTO on there because that one really sucks for showing you this. And sometimes I'll have five, six, seven pages for how I want them to be on there um, because I found one just like this one here that I didn't like. 
So then I'll go to like, okay, let's find a second one. Um, let's go to the OTO. Um, dun, dun, dun. Let's, uh, not loving these. Let's see, which one do I normally go to? I don't even know. Let's let me see this one real quick. Oh, never mind. We're choosing this one. Okay. So this is OTO. Before you go, upgrade your account today. It was 197. Now it's just that. Here's the yes link for the OTO. Where is it going? So there's no product that has been set up on this page. So let's go out, let's add a product. So you're gonna go out, go to the products, go in there, add your new product. So it was $47, so you have to connect your Stripe to it. Then you highlight it or your PayPal, you can add PayPal too. I think there's a couple other payment integrations you can add as well. I just have Stripe, so that's what I'm gonna connect. It's a one-time payment. Um, and I'm gonna click save and next. I'm gonna name my product so that, and this is what will show up on the page. So on the page that they are um, looking at, you know, when they purchase, this is what the product will be. So it'll be, um, let's see, a amazing, amazing product. Number one, gonna do the price. I think it was, um, 147. No, no, no. Um, 197 here. And then we'll do. This is where you customize it so that you can have it um, look a specific way on the sales page when they purchase it. So it's 47. And then I always, here's the billing description, what shows up on their end, on their credit card statement. So we're going to do, and you only have so many characters. Using product number one. Ooh, I made it. And if there's an inventory limit, make sure you put them down there. If not, save and next. So this is where you can, um, do your product variations. Oh, I think there was no one. Hold on. So the product details. This one here also is, is this a bump product? So a bump product, if you're not familiar, we'll go into this one here and go. Jeez Louise, why are all these up here? Come on. You can do it. Go ahead and put your back into it. Okay, maybe not. Let's try again. Okay, guess not. Hopefully y'all still with me. So anyway, we're not going to do a bump product this moment, but I will, um, I will create a bump product so we can see it as well. So we're gonna save a next. We're gonna do that. Um, do you have variations? Are there different colors? Is this um, shirts or whatever? If there's variations, you click this on and put in variations. What is going on? Well, stuff's not working. Hmm. Let me refresh. Hmm. Okay. My page mm -hmm. ain't working. So, Stephen, do you have any other mm -hmm. questions about this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Since my computer seems to be frozen. Oh, that's unfortunate. 
I know. It's just getting to the good stuff. I was enjoying myself too. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I can get it back up there. Like it's it's not doing anything. Um, okay, there we go. I got it. So let's go. And you can hear my dog in the background whining. She's a whiner. She's a whiner. Okay, so we're going to go click next on this one. So here's where it comes to, so as you're adding in your product, if you have the ClickFunnels email um, marketing on, on your package, then you can go ahead and use it on here. Or if you do not, then keep it checked off. Because if it's on, it'll come on, and then you can write the subject and the body copy and all of that. Can you uh, share the screen? Oh, hey, that might be a good idea. You're right. Thanks for that. So this is what it looks like before. And then um, if you wanted to use the emails from ClickFunnels, you would click it to on and then save it, whatever. And then I'll send So as soon as they purchase, they'll get this email immediately from ClickFunnels. But if you have a different fulfillment agency, um, like for email automations, I'll show you here in the next couple. Um, and this is for your thank you page or membership page, which we're not talking about that today. Um, so here's where you trigger a follow-up action. This button here on your um, sales pages, your OTOs, is going to be so important um, because if you're admitting people into your email list and you only use the feature on the page, so like say on the opt-in page, you're, you're opting in, go to the overview here, We'll click into here. So you have the option at this page level to do an integration, which we did a couple weeks ago. We connected it to my active campaign. We added it to a list and we're going to put them on my main email list. Okay. If you're selling something and you connect it at this page level and <clears throat> you find out that several people have gotten your product or access to your course or whatever it was, and they didn't purchase it. It's because on the back of ClickFunnels, this here integration, when you connect it, it does not necessarily um, stop the people like from coming into that without purchasing. I know it's crazy. To stop that from happening, in which it happens more frequently than not, is you're going to, um, we're working in here in the OTO2, um, we're going to go in here at the follow-up action level, and we're going to click yes. We want a follow-up action. I want them, we're going to do the same thing here on my active campaign. I want to add them to a list. And now if you do the tagging system, so you can add them to a list without a tag or you can add them to a list with a tag. Either one depends on how you have your email automation set up. I add mine to a list with a tag. Then I choose the tag. Oh, this is the list. Okay. So I'm going to add them to my main one and this is the tags. So we're going to do um, whatever, the first tag. We're going to click save and next. It will not send them to that list with that tag unless it's purchased, which is key for because a lot of people come to me like, Faith, they're letting people into my course or giving my product away for free when they haven't purchased it. Um, and that's a way to stop that. And then if it's a physical product, then you have to like integrate it with a bunch of different things for auto shipping and different stuff like that. So save and next, and it'll give you a summary of everything you want this funnel to do for at that page. So when they purchase, this is, this is what you're telling it you want it to do. You're wanting it to bill through Stripe a one-time payment of $47. It is not a bump product. It's just a regular OTO product. There are no max quantities, no pre-solds. There's no product 
quantity limits. Um, it is not taxable. You can change all that before. And then what happens when they purchase is you want them to go onto into your active campaign. That's your integration. You want them to go to a list with the tags. So we're going to go into my Facebook main list or my Faith Sage main list. Um, and they're going to have this specific tag added. So I do not have affiliate stuff set up for this. And at this point, that is exactly what I want it to do. So I'm going to return to the product list. So now I have my product. So we're going to add a bump product so you can see like the bump stuff on there as well. So let's add the bump. It's going to be the same thing except one minor adjustment. So this is going to, well, I guess the naming and stuff too and the pricing. Um, amazing. Bump. This one's going to be 10 bucks. This will be, I don't know, 10 bucks. And we're going to go amazing bump. And then down here, we're going to select that it is a bump product. Say we only have 13 of these. Max inventory is 13, and somebody purchased two of them already. Never lie. Always be truthful with your stuff so that way people don't think that you're one of those scammers. And again, if you want it fulfilled through uh, Act, or I'm sorry, ClickFunnels, then you're going to click this and fill that all out. If not, save it next. This is your follow-up action again. I want it to go through active campaign. I want it to go to a list with a tag. And then in active campaign, you would set up almost like an email funnel in active campaign telling active campaign, okay, when um, this email comes onto my list with this tag, do this, send this email or do this action. But we're not there yet. We're a long ways away from there yet. So there we're gonna do that. Save a next. And then we'll get down to the summary again um, and just make sure, just do a double check if it's not going to where you want it to go. If it is, fantastic. And then you have your amazing product number one for $47 and your amazing bump for 10 bucks on this, this page, your OTO page. We'll go back. Now let's come into the edit page. We want to see this um, because I don't necessarily like this. I want people to see what it is. Um, so let's see. It is set. We have it set. So this one here because this is an OTO page and you've told them what the price is, you should underneath here have a little um, element that says, if you click the button above, your card will be charged. $47. Otherwise, I feel that these pages are not specifically clear as to if they're going to be charged or not. Some people think that they are going to just go to another page and it's going to give them the option again. But if you say, yes, I want this, it's going to automatically charge your card. So just, I like to let people know. That's all. And the sales page, I'm not sure why it is not showing the product because it should. Maybe it's because I chose a sucky sales page. <laughs> that would be about right. Oh, let's see if they have a different one. Sales page number two. 
And you know what? We don't even need that one. We can go here to we can add a new step and it's going to be thank you. Or no, I'm sorry, uh, check out. Add a checkout page. So they'll go to the opt-in, it'll route them into the sales page, go to the checkout page, which will move it right up here. Just grab it and move. Then we'll go to the O2 OTO2 page. Yeah, because that one's not what we want. Um, and so then we have the thank you. So we are on the checkout page, which it has the well, I guess we have to figure out which one we want. So we're going to go up here to um, order form. And here are all the order forms that you can choose from. So let's select this template. There's ClickFunnels has so many options on the back end. Right now, we're just getting the pages in order for how we want them. Um, we can go through and do the custom designing of it after the fact, but as long as we have the sequence in order, that'll make it so much easier for your thoughts to flow through the page. So here's our page, and it's a two-step order form because it's got step one and step two. Um, dun, dun, dun. Here's the product. And I would have rather have had the products from here and here, but we'll add them real quick so you can see what they look like um, on the order page. So let's do, which I don't know why. Okay, Stripe, next. We'll do amazing product number 1A. Super creative here for $97. I'll change it up a little bit. So we'll do 97 here so it looks pretty on the page. Go here to the billing. Um, I don't know what that is. Um, on the billing. Come on. Amazing product number one. A. This is a regular product, it's not a pump or a pump, a bump. And then sometimes it does this, which I have no idea what that means. Because I put it all in there decently. Okay. We're not going to create any variations. We're not going to have a fulfillment email. We're going to go to the follow up actions, click those on, go through active campaign, add to a list with a tag, go through the steps all again. Sure, that works. And, in, and, and for the tags, you would have those, you can either create them here or you can go into your email provider and create your tags in there if it allows for tagging. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Uh, it is not a physical product. We have our summary eventually. Yep, there we go, it's $97 offer. Um, it's amazing product 1A, it is not a bump. It's gonna be go to this list with this tag and we're done, so we'll go back. I'm gonna create a bump one real quick just so that we can see those, so y'all can see those on the page. So, the bumpity bump. Bump, bump, bump. 25 bucks normally. Today only, you get it for 10.95. Just kidding, we're gonna do $10. Bumpity bump. Bump, bump, bump. Oh, shit. Whoops. Okay, we got to go back. So you can just click the button up here and go back. Very simple. Or you forgot to click bump. 
There we go. We're not going to put any limits on it because like they can order as much as they want on this bumpity bump. We do not have any variations. We're not going to do the email fulfillment. We're going to go to the follow-up actions again. Add it to the list of the tag. Come on now. Work with me here. Main list. Um, spotlight. Sure. Sounds amazing. Save and next. And here's our summary. So this is a bump product. There's no quantity pre-sold, no max quantities. There's the price it's on the list with the tag. We're good to go. Now we'll come back here to the main one. Go to the overview of it. And now you can click the preview. So now when you go to step two, uh, you let me find, okay, go to step two. Now it's got, okay, we have our amazing product 1A for $97 that I just put in. And the bump here, it's in there. You have to customize this little block for it to show the pricing and all that stuff. So we're not gonna do that today because I have completely blown my time today. Um, but here is how you add the bump product, the regular product onto the sales page with the thank you page. Or I'm sorry, the OTO page, the sales page. So the sales page is just gonna route them into the checkout page. Like, hey, yes, I want this, go here. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, oh, I told you I would show you how to um, make the width smaller in here. So you can do that at the section level or at the this blue level, which I'm not sure exactly which one that is. So if you want to make a full section smaller, you go right here to section width and you either go like wide or medium and it will narrow everything into that field so that you can keep your prospect's eyes going down a small narrow path as opposed to turn, having to turn their head and go left to right to cover the whole like field of the screen. So now that we have a beautifully ugly page, what you think? Any questions?